Hello everyone and welcome to another video. The MacBook Air. Having come out in 2008, I think it's by far the best MacBook lineup that Apple has ever come up with. My first MacBook was a 2013 Air and I loved that thing. But today, I have another classic. The first ARM-based MacBook Air. I already made a video about it back in November 2021, but now that we're in 2025, I think it's time to give it another shot. I got this from Facebook Marketplace. I check Marketplace every now and then to see if there are any good deals, and this was such a good deal that I couldn't skip out on it. First and foremost, it looks brand new. Obviously it needed a little bit of cleaning, but once I did that, I couldn't spot a single scratch, which is quite rare among used MacBooks. I paid around $200 for it, and you might think that it's too good to be true. And you would be partially right. This Air had a battery issue, that's to say it would only work while plugged in. I checked coconut battery as well, and it wouldn't even recognize the battery. The M1 Air had two CPU options. The base model came with 8 CPU cores and 7 GPU cores, whereas the more expensive models had 8 of each. The one I have here today is the base model, so it's missing a GPU core. Honestly, I've owned both variants and haven't noticed any difference in daily use. It would be somewhat noticeable if you're doing video editing or rendering, but even then, the difference wouldn't be that significant. It also has a 256GB SSD and 8GB of RAM. Look, these laptops weren't cheap when they came out, and I don't think it was the best decision to ship these out with only 8GB of RAM. But the truth is that most people who use these Airs wouldn't really benefit from the extra RAM. So essentially Apple could get away with it. In fact, Apple was still selling MacBooks with only 8GB of RAM up until a couple months ago. We also have a 13-inch screen with a resolution of 2560x1600, a 720p camera, a fantastic backlit keyboard, and a force touch trackpad. When the second generation Retina MacBooks came out, they had these super low profile keyboards that everyone hated. I had a 2018 MacBook Pro that had one of those, and not only was it not fun to type on, but it also came with all sorts of double typing issues. Fortunately, Apple backtracked, and we're back to this beautiful keyboard. I really like typing on these. It's also supposed to have a 49.9 watt hour battery that would offer up to 15 hours of web browsing. But as I mentioned earlier, the battery on this one straight up didn't work. What's really interesting is that this laptop was manufactured a little over two years ago, so the battery shouldn't have failed like this. Anyways, $75 and an hour later, I had the new battery installed on this MacBook. Top tip, if you're planning on replacing the battery on your MacBook, iFixit is your best friend since they have the best freaking guides in the world. I then ran Apple Diagnostics and I'm very happy to report that it found no issues. I was fully expecting it to say that I had a non-OEM battery, but it didn't. So how is it like to daily drive one of these in 2025? I use my laptops for web browsing, FaceTime calls, as well as some regular work tasks, which just happens to be how most people use their laptops. My daily driver is a 16-inch MacBook Pro with an M2 Pro processor, and I'll also be mentioning my note-taking device, which is this Surface Pro 11. I'll first start with the ports. We have two USB-C ports, also known as Thunderbolt 3, as well as a headphone microphone combo jack. That's it. Remember how not having regular USB ports used to be a huge deal? Yeah, we all got used to it. Not having MagSafe is annoying, I'll be honest, and I'm really glad that Apple brought it back. When ARM-based MacBooks first came out, there were a fair bit of apps that required a translator since they weren't natively compatible with ARM. Fortunately, that's no longer a problem, and pretty much all the apps that you use on your ARM MacBook are natively compatible. Even with that translator though, the M1 Air was much quicker and snappier than the Intel MacBooks. If you remember, those late Intel MacBooks were plagued with performance and thermal issues, and switching to one of these was a huge relief. Well, that feeling hasn't vanished yet. Daily tasks like web browsing or writing up a document are a total breeze on this Air. Watching Netflix or 4K YouTube is obviously not an issue either. 
These might not sound like much, but keep in mind that the whole MacBook Air lineup exists for tasks like this. This laptop has a fanless design, so we can't talk about any fan noise. Normally, as a computer ages and programs become more resource intensive, there will be more heat since the processor has to work more. And as a result of that, the fans will spin faster. And that results in more noise. Since this air doesn't have a fan, and yeah I know there's a joke there, if the processor has to work more, it'll just result in more heat which will ultimately cause the laptop to slow down. Fortunately, I haven't experienced any slowdowns on this machine. In fact, it doesn't even warm up under daily use. The CPU temperature hovers at around 30 degrees and the chassis stays cool at all times. 8GB of RAM is supposed to be a problem, but truth be told, macOS does a great job of RAM management, so you don't really notice anything. It does rely on the swap memory, which means that it uses a part of your SSD to keep some stuff that would otherwise be in the RAM, but since the SSD is plenty fast, you don't actually notice anything when it relies on that. The trick to this laptop, and this actually is the trick to any MacBook, is to avoid checking CPU or memory usage. Out of sight, out of mind. Because if you do check, you'll see that the RAM usage is often above 75% with the pressure around 40 to 45%. The highest I've ever seen under daily use was 80% usage with the pressure around 58%. Either way, I still don't think that's a huge deal, at least for now. No matter how cheap, modern Apple devices all have great screens and that makes watching videos a great experience. This one is a high-res screen that gets plenty bright and has HDR support. You might not care about this, but you can also set the brightness to 0%, which is a huge deal for me. To be fair, most MacBooks allow you to do this and it's actually really useful if you like sleeping with something playing in the background. Most Windows laptops on the other hand, they don't have an easy way of doing this anymore. I have one complaint regarding video playback though. After all these years, macOS still doesn't have a native Netflix app. This might not sound like a big deal and for the most part, it isn't but it also means that you can't download your Netflix shows, so you'll have to rely on your phone or your tablet when you're on a plane. Windows, on the other hand, has a Netflix app that you can download shows with. Speakers are pretty good too, but they definitely don't go as loud as I'm nowadays used to. There is depth and the quality is there, but they just don't go super loud. that the ARM-based MacBooks brought into the world of laptops was the amazing battery life. I used to get around 10 hours of real daily use back in 2021 with the M1 Air. This was a nice breeze after only getting 4-5 to five hours with 13-inch Intel MacBooks. There's a brand new battery on this Air that I got from Amazon and it lasts around 9.5 hours under daily use. You might think that the replacement battery that I got isn't as good as the OEM battery. And you might be right, but I was able to confirm that it indeed has the capacity that it claims to have. I drained the battery to 0% and then I checked the amount of energy transferred from my charger to the laptop and it came to around 56 watt hours. So it actually exceeds the OEM battery capacity. Obviously in the last 4 years, apps and programs became more resource intensive and that obviously results in a higher power consumption. Regardless, 9.5 hours of real life daily use is no slouch. So, how does this Air compare with its modern competitors? It runs macOS Sequoia, which is the latest macOS version. Switching from my newer Pro to this Air didn't prevent me from using any modern macOS features. I can still mirror my iPhone screen onto my MacBook, I can use Touch ID or my Apple Watch to log in, and all the quality of life features are there. Its Wi-Fi is a bit outdated, but most people won't notice a difference. It supports Wi-Fi 6, but doesn't support 6 GHz networks. This results in a theoretical maximum speed of 1200 megabits, and in practice, it'll max out at around 500 megabits. Newer laptops, including my MacBook Pro and the Surface Pro 11 support newer standards, 
and offer up to 1300 megabits per second of real life speeds. Regardless, it does just fine for daily tasks and I haven't had any signal issues or connection drops. I have no complaints about the keyboard and the trackpad. It's fun to type on this keyboard and the trackpad is really accurate. The built-in camera isn't the best though. It's a 720p camera and the quality isn't nearly as good as the newer MacBook cameras. It's not all fun and games though. The biggest shortcoming of this MacBook Air is the refresh rate. 120Hz screens are getting more and more popular and once you get used to it, it's very hard to go back. 60Hz screens make any device feel like it's laggier and slower than it actually is. Even the latest MacBook Air doesn't have a 120Hz screen, but its modern competitors like the Surface Pro 11 absolutely do. Alright, so here's the question. Should you buy one of these in 2025? I think I've made it clear that there shouldn't be anything stopping you from buying one of these, both in terms of software and hardware. The deciding factor would then be the price, so if you can find one at a good price, I'd say just go for it. Obviously the best case scenario would be to find one like this one that I have that needed a quick repair. My only concern is about how long Apple will keep supporting these Airs. Since they're ARM devices, they don't come with bootcamp so you can't install Windows or any other operating system alongside macOS. Although you could run Windows on a virtual machine, you might run into performance issues. Also, the ARM version of Windows has a bunch of issues too, so the experience wouldn't be the best anyway. Either way, the decision is yours. Thank you so much for watching, please consider liking this video, checking out my other videos, and subscribing to my channel. Have a good one.